Hello and welcome to the Excel VBA functions series. In this video, we'll talk about the functions split, L-bound and U-bound. And a split is a very useful function. Let me show you the basic syntax. Let's say we have a variable called fruits as a string and fruits has the name of some fruits separated with a comma. We can split that string in separate elements and create an array. So the fruits array would be using a split with the string, which is fruits, and a delimiter. The delimiter now in this example is going to be the comma. So we're going to split that text by the comma. And remember, arrays start from the index 0. So if we display the fruits array 0, it's going to be the first element in the array, which is apple. Then banana would be 1, mango would be 2, and orange would be 3. And I've covered all of that. You should be already familiar with arrays in the tutorial for beginners. So check this video. I'm going to leave you the link up here to see the basics of arrays in Excel VBA. And then we could loop through each element in this array and add it, for example, to arrange in the worksheet. So for each fruit, we could call it fruit, we could call it element, whatever, in fruits array, we're going to use a variable to get the row. We're going to add each element or each fruit to a different row in the worksheet. And then with cells row r, comma, column 1, we're going to have the fruit. Next, fruit. So if we run this, as you see, we get each element in the array, each fruit in a different cell. Okay, that's the basics of the split function. Now let's see a more practical example. If you remember, or if you've seen the previous videos, we used uh, other VBA functions to get the extension of a file. We've actually used the write function in one of the videos, and we've also used the in string function. Now we can also do it with the split function, and probably this is the best method. That's why I want to show you the exact same example. We're going to get the extension using the split function. So let me come back here and create a function to get the extension. Now we're going to have the file name as a string, and we're going to return the extension as a string as well. And for that, we're going to have another variable. Let's call it name split. And using the split function with the file name, we're going to split it using the dot, right? So basically, we're going to have just two elements, the file name and the extension. So then we can get the extension as the name split element with the index 1. But it could be that there are other dots. So to make sure, we're going to use the last element in the array. And to get the index of the last element, we use U-bound. So we have two other VBA functions, L-bound, which stands for lower bound of the array, and U-bound, which stands for the upper row of the array. So if we use the U-bound of the name split function, we're going to get the last we're going to get the index for the last element in the array. In this example, it's going to be 1, which belongs to the second element. So 0 and 1. Now, if we come back here and we use our get extension function, you see we're going to get the um, extension of the file, whatever the length of the file. Yeah, if it's three characters or four characters or anything. Now, let's see another example. In this other sheet, we have the file name, the file size, and the file path. And here's where the split function can be very useful. So we could, for example, get the last folder as we actually did in some other videos, but in a much better, in a much more efficient way. Or we could get each folder in this path, or we could also get the path root. So let's see how to do that. And let me probably add it in a new module. So let's say function get last folder using the split function and we're gonna and we're gonna get the file path as a string 
and we're going to return a string as well. So again, as before, we're going to get the path split using the split function of the file path. And the delimiter now is going to be the backslash. So this has created an array with the different folders. Now we can get the last folder exactly as we did it before. So we're going to use the path split with u bound of the path split. So now if we use get last folder for this string here, we're going to get documents in this case. We're going to get um, documents, music, and videos. Now, we could get any other folder, or we could also get the first element in the array, which is the path root. So let's see how to do that. That's going to be very similar, just with a slight difference. So let me create a function get path root for that, for that file path as a string, returning a string as well. So again, we're going to have the path split using the split function for the file path and and the backslash and now to get the path root we're gonna actually use the path split but instead of the u bound we're gonna use the l bound so the lower bound of that which is gonna be the first element and as we discussed already that would be the index zero so this would be equivalent to use actually zero, but we're going to do it this way to understand how the L bound function works. Now, if we go back to our example here and we get the path root for this, it's going to be C. All of them are in the C drive, but it, it could be D, it could be any other drive. Now, we've seen how to count occurrences with other functions, but they all have some limitations. However, the split function allows to easily count the occurrences of a character or of even a substring within a main string. So let me put that in another module because it's something uh, different to what we've seen. So we can count occurrences using the split function basically with this formula, the u bound of using a split with the main string and using a sub string as a delimiter. So let's use the telephone example we used in a previous video. So the main string would actually be a telephone number, class one. And we want to know here how many hyphens do we have. So the sub string would be the hyphen. And of course, if we display this occurs variable, it's going to be three. We saw how to do this using the replace function in a previous video. But the advantage here is that we can actually check for not just one character. We can check for a number of characters. So let me use another example from a previous video as well, where we had this JSON string response from an API call that returns the number of universities for a given country. And we used the in string function to get the total count of universities. So we can actually use the split function in just one line of code to get that same information. So we would say our main string now is whatever we have there in range A1 or in cell A1. And we're going to split that text with the delimiter name because there's always a name university key value pair in that JSON response. So if we run this macro, as you see, we get 37 because the name key of this JSON response appears 37 times. And we've used only one line of code. And I've also used the split function to read the JSON response after importing a Google spreadsheet in Excel. I'm going to leave the link up here so you can see so you can see how to use the split function to do that. In some other video, I've also used the split function to sort text entries in a cell or a range or also to sort the elements in an array. I'm also leaving the link to these videos up here. So check that out if you want to see more practical examples of the split function. 
Thanks for watching.